So let's say you're trying to implement a case management solution on Service Cloud using Salesforce, and you need to relate multiple contacts to a single case. How would you do that? The answer, contact roles for cases. It's an out of the box standard solution and it's really easy to set it up. Let me show you how. Okay, so here we are in Salesforce. The first thing we're gonna do is set up contact roles for cases, and then we're gonna have a look at a case record. So first thing you wanna do is click on the cogwheel and go into setup, and then you wanna search for contact roles, and you'll see that there is an option that says contact roles on cases. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. Now you'll notice that there is nothing that you need to enable. This is something that already exists. If you can't see it on your case record page, it's because you need to add it as a related list on your page layout. But the first thing you want to do is have a look at the actual contact roles pick list values, because this will dictate what role that contact plays on that specific case. Then you can go to object manager, go to your case object, click on case page layouts, open the page layout that you would like. In this case, I'll select just the case layout. Then on the left hand side here, I'm going to scroll down to related lists. And then here is where I want to add my contact roles related list. Okay, now if we go to the front end of Salesforce, I'll go ahead and click on the case tab, I'll open up a case. And when I go to my related tab, you see that the contact roles component will now appear. So again, I didn't have to enable anything. This is enabled by default, but if you're not seeing this on your case record, it's because you need to add it as a related list first. So of course you have the option to create a new case manually and then go to the related list and click new. And then here you see that it will be linked to the case that it was launched from automatically. And then you can select the contact and the role that that contact plays on this case. So for example, we can say, decision maker, and then we hit save. So this is one contact to uh, related to this case. But if you're just gonna have one, then you can just use the contact lookup field on the case and populate that field with the contact that you want. Of course, you can't select a role that they play, but given that there is only a single contact, then it's not really that important. But if you need to relate multiple contacts to a case, then you can use the case uh, contact roles and add more than one contact with different roles. So here, for example, I can go ahead and click new and search for another contact. Um, let's say Rose, and let's say that Rose is the technical contact, and then I hit save, and now I have more than one contact related to a single case. To tidy up our case creation, what we would want to do is have an automation that when a case is created, it takes the value from the contact field and auto creates a contact role with that contact. So let's do that. We're gonna go back to setup and we're gonna search for flow. We're gonna click on flows and then we're gonna click on new. We want to make a new record trigger flow and we want to make it so that it is on the case object and it's triggered when a record is created and it's only triggered when the contact ID is null equals false. In other words, we only want to trigger this flow when the case is created and the contact ID does have a value because if it doesn't have a value there is no point in triggering this flow because we won't know who to link the contact role uh, to. Now another way that you could do this is if the implementation is going to be relatively large with various different automations then you might want to have a single record trigger flow that will trigger for various different things on case creation. Okay, so now that I've entered my criteria, the next thing that I want to do is just to add a create element. So create records and here I want to create a new contact role 
um, record. And so I'm going to select my contact role, case contact role object. And then if you click on fields, you see that it only has three fields to populate and we actually want to populate all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the fields because we want to populate all three of them. For case ID, we want to select the record ID. In other words, this is the case that triggered the flow. For contact ID, again, I want to look at my record and then search for the contact ID. And then for role, this is a pick list value. This is what we set up in the back end. Here, I need to decide which will be the default role of every contact role that we have on the case. So when a case is created, a contact role will be created automatically. And what is their default role? So for example, I will select decision maker. That is to say, every time a case is created, the contact that the case is linked to will always be the decision maker. And then any additional contacts on top of that will have different roles. And that's it. So now what I want to do is I want to hit save and I'll save this flow. So case creation. I'll save it and activate it. And let's try it out. So I'm going to go back to the front end. I'm going to refresh my page and I'm going to create a new case. I'm going to select the same contact, Andy Young. And we will know this is working because when I create this case, a contact role record will automatically be created with Andy as the decision maker. So let's try it out. I'll go ahead and hit save. And then I'll go to my related list. And there is my contact role record. It's related to Andy. He's the decision maker because he is the same contact that I use to populate the contact name when I created my new case. And so now I can come into this case and I can add additional contacts. Like for example, I can add Rose as the technical contact for this case. And now I have more than one contact related to a case.